Thank you, Sean. It was awesome. We're putting the uh, set list together and asked Sean to do an original song. And he says, well, I have this one, but it's like kind of a whiny, <laughs> lamenting look. <Yeah. laughs> and I said, let's go with it. Hmm. And as I was listening to it, because I hadn't heard the song before, but I knew that that was part of the description of it. So I was listening to that in a different way. Because that song is also about the dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. About feeling suddenly like we're alone. And wanting that to be over. And wanting that feeling to come back. So thank you for that. Thank you. The talk today is called Welcome Home. So welcome home. We say that every week. Welcome home. Yeah. It's wonderful to have you here. Um, yeah, just a quick recap. What is home? Where is home? A lot of people think that home is where you keep your stuff. <laughs> Having moved a bunch of times, I think that home is wherever it is that my bed is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your go out. Well, yeah, we can I spread my heart around a whole bunch of places, but there's some place that I'm going to go back and sleep when, <laughs> when every other place is unavailable, and that's kind of home. Home is where you feel it. And of course, that's one of the things that we do at New Thought Philadelphia, is we, we want people to feel at home. Now, it'd be nice if we could make you feel at home, but we've learned a long time ago, I can't make you feel anything. I can do things, I can create a situation or an environment or a scenario and welcome you, and if you feel at home there, that's great, but that's your feeling. So, Making somebody feel at home, it's a wonderful thing to say. It's not actually possible to do. You watch kids play. They play tag. There's always home base. That's home. Ollie, ollie, all home free. <laughs> and you get to go to that place where everything is okay. So when we say welcome home, we're talking about a whole bunch of different things. Home is where your family is. Home is where your community is. It's where your life is centered. For some people, home is their body. Some people do not feel at home in their body, but they wish that they did. They would like to be welcome home there in their body. And in so many ways, home is where you are. Home is right here and right now. So the idea of somebody wanting to make you feel at home or give you an opportunity to feel at home is the recognition that wherever it is that you're going, there's the opportunity to be at home in that place. So welcome home. <sighs> Reverend Dave and I have been talking a lot about principle and remaining focused on principle. And it is really easy in some other religions and churches and spiritual practices to have the whole set of rules that you get to follow and everybody spends a lot of time following the rules so they know that they're part of the program, that they're home, that that's because everybody's got their whole thing together. And we have one. We will go down to one. There's one power, love, intelligence that creates everything, including each of us, and we each use that same power, love, intelligence to create our lives according to our beliefs. That one is love. That one is always love. That's the principle that we're going with. And everything else is added on top of that. So in Judaism, they have mitzvahs. The bar mitzvah is where you learn the mitzvahs so that you can obey the laws. Anybody know how many there are? 300 and something and other. 613 okay. mitzvahs. <laughs> 613. And we have one. Thank God this is not a competition. <laughs> <laughs> but the first 10 are all about God. The first 10 are all about there's a unity, there is one power and presence, there's one love, and all of the rest of them, in some way or another, say, see number one above. So we're just stopping with number one and letting the rest of what we're talking about fit together. Do I care if you eat pork? My wife does. Not because she's Jewish. It's because she's, she's a vegetarian. She doesn't like the idea of eating pork. And that's okay. And whatever it is is okay for each individual person. The idea is to be at home, to be in communion with that oneness that we are, to be aware of the truth that that one love is showing up as me.
right here and now. And the good news is that we're all one. The other good news is that we're each free to have the experience of our life that we're having. There's this incredibly powerful illusion that we're separate. That where my body ends, there's something else that's not me. So there's me and not me. And then I'm looking at you and that says you're separate from me and Dave is and the people who are out on the street and the people all around and around and around. And the illusion is so powerful that we often believe it. Sean was singing the song, we believe that we're alone, we believe that we're separate, we're be we believe that we're not connected. What kind of rotten trick is that? <laughs> <laughs> to be created as an expression of the one and then forget it and be given all of the evidence that it's not true so often and so repeatedly and so deeply. Because there's seven billion people on the planet, each one of us has a unique perspective. It's like surveillance cameras, looking at stuff from different angles. We've got seven billion different angles that we're looking at stuff from. And I don't know if you've ever gotten together in a group, 10 people talking about something that happened yesterday, can't agree on what happened, hmm. the actual activity that happened. And then you start talking about what it meant. Suddenly, those 10 people have 40 different opinions about something that happened yesterday. You take that and you multiply it by 7 billion and we start talking about things that happened historically, what are the chances we're going to agree? So that's our world. That's the world that we live in. And there's only one thing to say about that. Welcome home. <laughs> because this world is our world. This is the world that we share with all of the perspectives and all of the good news and the bad news, all of the ups and the downs. This turned out to not be such a great weekend in Paris. Terror attacks, 130 some people lost their lives. As an expression of one group of people thinking they needed to prove something to another group of people and bringing that anger and energy and violence into a place that's called the City of Light. And the people who were attacked had nothing to do with it. They just they were all, quote, innocent bystanders. So we can talk about the psychology of the people who did that and we can talk about the difference between that bright light of love that each of those people who was attacked is, the truth of who they are, and the fact that their life experience changed so dramatically at that time. Because it's true, they're both true. Each person involved in that is that bright light of God's love. Has to be. See item one above, there's one power and presence that shares itself as all of its creation. So I can't believe that that's true for me and for everybody here and for everyone who I like and think that it's not true for other people because that's buying into that same sense of separation that has been causing problems for so many, many thousands of years. Now, just perspective-wise, personally, I don't think that was a good idea for the people who did the attack to do. Just historically speaking, in the last hundred years, the people who have attacked France have not done well. <laughs> we're in the middle of it so it's hard to see the bigger picture now it's certainly not the sort of thing that we want to be talking about in relation to the people who were just attacked so just a few days ago but in the bigger picture as long as we're assuming that there is one bright light of love that's unfolding in all of these different ways it's seeking ways to fit together and to bring something new and wonderful into being On Wednesday was 11-11, which a lot of people attached a lot of significance to. That's a day that's made of all ones. It is all one, on one, 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 one. And there was an 11-11 in the morning where that happens. You can get as numerological as you want to. And the numbers may or may not mean anything, but the reminder that there's only one, there's only one power and presence, is what we can take away from that. A reminder that this is the world that we're living in. And I can feel like a small cog out in a distant 
part where I'm not necessarily connected to what's going on someplace else. Or I can have the perspective that I am that God presence now and it's what I'm bringing to the situation, not necessarily by my physical actions, not by going out and getting a rifle and finding somebody to fight with, but by knowing that there's a higher truth that's available to everybody. I went to a wedding in Florida last week, so I wasn't here, been traveling around. Did, I've done the whole East Coast. I did Vermont, now I've done Florida, so I'm done with the East Coast. And it was uh, Nick Annis' wedding. He's a musician who sung here for us before. And one of the wonderful lines that he has as he talks about scripture getting translated and translated and retranslated, he says, it's kind of hard to know what it really meant in the beginning, but he says, here's a clue. If you're killing somebody in the name of God, you miss the message. <laughs> and that's true of every scripture. The people who are interpreting their scripture, their religion, their dogma to say, I need to kill these people because it makes my life better, have missed the point. We are one power and presence having seven billion different experiences. I can't change the one at all. And there's no need to victimize somebody else to try and get what I want. In the big picture, it's out of consciousness, it's out of integrity. In practical terms, as soon as you annoy the people who <laughs> are eventually going to take up arms and, and engage in the fight, it's not going to work out well. Germany's tried that a couple of times in the last century. It didn't, it didn't go well. There have been other world powers who have waxed and waned because at our core, Civilization is continuing to grow, it's continuing to unfold, it is continuing to expand because there's this yearning to bring more light and more love into our world. So these situations are temporary. Our job, first and foremost, is to see the truth beyond them. It's one of the things that we teach practitioners. It's to be able to look a fact in the face and know something better. It's not to deny the facts, not to say, oh, well, that didn't really happen. Or, oh, that bad thing that happened, you shouldn't really worry about that, because that's not the important part. It's to look that fact in the face, that there was this trauma, this, there was this, this difficult situation, there was this thing that happened, and yet there is love that's unfolding beyond that, beneath that and within that. Our friend Michael Beckwith says that he stopped reading the newspaper for the longest time because it was just depressing. It's all the bad news. They don't say that in the newspaper, it's all the bad news. They never say the good stuff in the newspaper. Every once in a while there's a little feature story about something happy, but usually it's about all the calamities and all the attacks and all of the horrible things. Now, the joke was that Channel 6, news on TV, they, they do, they do their, their, their teaser. They say, this happened, this happened, this happened, and, but our lead story, it's the fire. There was always a fire somewhere in Philadelphia, and they always put the fire on the beginning of the evening news. Because that was sensational. If it bleeds, it leads. If it bleeds, it leads. <laughs> Seriously. That's, a, that's an expression from the news yeah. business. Yep, yep. And I've, and I've been in the news business, and I know that. And, and that's the business that they're in. So Michael Beckwith wasn't reading the newspaper for the longest time, and then he realized that he could read the newspaper differently. And he had an invitation for all of us. He says, don't look at it as a report of what's going on in the world. Look at it as a prayer request. Whatever it is that we're reading in the newspaper, those things that are dysfunctional, that aren't working properly, that are a, a challenge or a trauma, it is an invitation to look that fact in the face and know something better. How can love possibly be unfolding in this situation? Because this is where we live. Welcome home. There's a, uh, a story that I heard about a church where, a Christian church, where the, the, the pastor had the children up on the platform and was asking them about what they'd been learning about, uh, uh, about their religion. And it's always dangerous to invite the children up on the platform because you never know what they're going to say. And so the pastor says, who can tell me about the resurrection? And the little kid raises his hand. 
Tell us about the resurrection. And the kid says, if you have one that lasts for more than four hours, you should call the doctor. <laughs> Amy Schumer says you should call <laughs> And of course, it took 10 minutes to get the congregation's attention again. <laughs> Sorry, folks. That's the world that we live in. Welcome home. <laughs> So in all of those situations, and all the, when things are going well, we can see the truth beyond, behind that, and it's really easy, because love is unfolding, love is revealing itself, and it's really obvious to us. And sometimes, things happen that seem awful. And that's the call for us to stop what we're doing, to drop into the awareness that there is love unfolding, and, and have the prayer be for, how is it that I can see the good in this situation? God, grant me the ability to see the good in this situation. So as I was getting ready to go to Florida, a couple weeks ago I came up with vertigo. So the room was spinning and my head felt congested. And <clears throat> I wasn't really concerned about missing the trip to Florida because it was a week away at that point. But it kept on going on. And so I went to the doctor. And the doctor looked at my ear and said, oh, there's some fluid in your ear. Mm -hmm, okay. Gave me some antibiotics. I don't think that the doctor even believed that they were going to help, but that's what doctors do. That's what they have. Here, take some amoxicillin for a week. And everything else. And, and that was two days, I think, before we were going to leave on the trip. And the day before we were going to leave. <clears throat> and my wife was concerned that if I had fluid in my ears, that could be a problem on the airplane. So she called her ear, nose, and throat specialist who said, yeah, I wouldn't advise flying. So, and I had specifically asked the doctor who saw me, is it okay to fly? She says, yeah, it's fine. So now I have two completely conflicting pieces of information. One that says, yep, it's okay, go to Florida, have a nice weekend down there on the beach, go to Nick's wedding. And this other piece of information that says, your eardrums could explode and you'll never hear anything again in your life. Well, I knew which one I wanted to choose. <laughs> But I wasn't sure. So it became a risk reward, what's the right thing to do? Because it was easy to take the, 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 the safe way and just stay home. But that wasn't really what I wanted to do. On the other hand, if I went to Florida and came back with like my head coming out through my ears, that would be no good either. So I did what I've trained other people to do. I took it to prayer. And the prayer wasn't for my ear to be fine and perfect and healthy and whole, although that was included in there as well. The big piece of the prayer was for the guidance, the clarity, the awareness. If there is some reason for me not to get on this airplane, spirit, make it obvious. Have something so completely obvious happen that it'll be like a, a, just a crystal clear signal. And if it's okay to go, let that be a clear signal as well. I got on the plane and there was no problem. And I saw the ear, nose, and throat specialist the next week, and there was not fluid in my ear. Ear, nose, and throat doctors are wonderful. Because they tell you for your entire life, don't put such a sharp piece of metal in your ear. And you go to see them, and what's the first thing they do? They put a piece of sharp metal in your ear. <laughs> I told her about that. She said, yeah, we know what we mean. <laughs> But it's the ability to be open to the possibility. The big thing for me at that point was to let go of my ego, to let go of what I wanted to have happen and be okay with whatever it was that happened. When I can let go of my charge of saying, this is good or this is bad, this is what I want or this is what I don't want, these are the good guys, these are the bad guys. When I stop separating the world according to what my ego tells me is this versus that, then I can start getting past that sense of separation and start seeing the truth that everything is one. So that's our first step. And it's not to say that our ego is bad. Ego is wonderful. I've said this before. If we were in a room full of people who weren't attached to their ego at all, we would not be able to take attendance. 
because I'd say Joe, and Joe would be so unattached to the fact that she's Joe that she'd never raise her hand, and I'd never know if she's there. <laughs> That's the simplest one. Whose car is parked in my space? I'm completely not attached to whether it's my car or not. You're still blocking me. <laughs> we need at least as much ego as it's going to take to be accountable for the stuff that's going on in our lives. Because we're each having an individual life. We're creating that life as an expression of the one, and we're accountable for the way that we're creating it. But at the end of the day, there is certain stuff that we are in specific control of, like where our body goes and what it is that we do, and where our mind is going, that it's good to have that much awareness. It's when we give our ego all the power and let the ego drive the whole show that we run the risk of going down a path that we don't want to be going down. So the reminder for you is that you're always a choice. Regardless of what's going on in your life, there is love unfolding. Regardless of what's going on in your life, love is unfolding right here and right now. And remind yourself that you're home. Welcome home.